I need a cup of coffee. If you were here, I'd make a pot and we'd have one together because it's probably one of the things I do best is make coffee and drink coffee. It's true. I make coffee way better than I make jewelry. And I make jewelry okay. Which is why I'm here sharing a new tip with you today. So you'll just have to imagine my cup of coffee and I'll have to have mine later. But what we're going to talk about today is aqua patina, a weathered looking patina on raw brass. And the reason that we're doing that is because I'm noticing over the years sharing components at BeastsBoutiques.com as well as teaching that that seems to be the favored finish. And I find myself too when I'm reaching for color, Millie's down here if you hear her. Um, when I'm reaching for color, so many times I reach for those teal, darker, you know, patina looks, look like something's been outside and weathered. So, I'm going to teach you, real specifically, a number of ways with cold products, like Swelligant. Um, we're going to use maybe a little alcohol ink. Um, this isn't cold. I use the torch. <laughs> That's hot. Um, just a different methods on how to get a little bit of color onto your brass and make it look old and weathered without taking a lot of time. Okay, I took too much time with this, so I'll shut up now. And we're going over there where I've made a really big mess, but there'll be some great ideas for you. So let's go. Okay, guys, so whenever I think of putting a, a verdigris type patina, meaning a, a patina that's kind of like a gilder's paste, patina color, which this is Gilder's Paste Patina, and this is also one way you can go. Um, I always think sort of a, of a color, sort of like this, but a little bit darker. And that's why I didn't do Gilder's Paste on these. This is Swelligant. I always go to Swelligant first, because it is a real patina system. It's not highly toxic. It's super simple to use. And just like all natural patinas, of course, you will not get a standard looking finish every time. It reacts to the brass differently every time. But for me, that's the coolness about it. And even with a commercially prepared patina finish, like we've had in different times at BeastsBoutiques.com, you can still have you know, one batch comes out one way, next batch comes out this way. It, 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 it's an artisan finish. With artisan finishes, you're going to have that. But, as Lauren was pointing out, Lauren's down here with us today because she's learning how to do video, too. Hi, guys. Hey, there's Lauren. Javi, let them know you're here, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Javi. Okay, um, what I had said in one of our outtakes, and then I forgot to say again, was using the raw brass and creating your own color makes you so much more of a designer because you can create your own color recipes that cost very little. Yeah, time. You're going to spend a little time, you know, creating your recipes, but the thing is, write them down. So you get a good cookie recipe you like, what do you do? You write it down. You write it down on a note card or and put it in a journal or something and keep it in your workshop. And that way, the next time you go to create that patina again, your results may not come out exactly the same, because there's some flex there, but it'll be similar. You'll be on the right track. So that's really all you have to do. And then what you might want to do is make a day every so often to colorize components. Come to bisuboutiques.com or wherever it is that you like to buy your brass stampings. We hope it's our place. Um, but, you know, wherever you get them, where, whatever, doesn't matter. Degrease them, clean them up really good, and take a day just piddling around your workshop creating patina and having fun. So anyway, what I did as I first went to swell again. Now these are still processing. But look at the variance in them. This is even the same stamping, came out of the same stamping batch. This one's more green, that one's more teal. You just, it's just no explaining it. Um, this one is a little more green. This one I did torch patina on first. That's why it's brown on the back. 
and it's retained most of its torchy look with just a little bit of green. I love this subtlety. I, if, if, if I could repre reproduce it that way every time, I would be thrilled. This one was torched also, but some of the patina stuff has gotten on the back, so we colorized it on the back, which is fine with me. It doesn't bother me. It's good. It saves me finishing the back later. Um, this one is really unique. It's the twin mermaids kissing from the old Victorian stuff, and... Um, I had put some of the Tiffany green, let's see, where is it? This is the Tiffany green swell again. It costs, I think, somewhere between six and seven dollars a bottle. It will last you a while. This is the darkening, and I've done a lot of videos on this and how quick it changes stuff. Sometimes it's like almost immediate. This is going to take you 15 minutes to an hour depending on the piece and depending on the environment. It likes humidity. So I'm in a basement, it's humid. So it likes it down here. But when you're done, because these aren't done processing, what you need to do is get yourself a bowl of water and throw them down in there. And as I've discussed with you previously, you must do that. That is a critical step because if you don't do that, they'll just keep on processing away. No matter what else you put on them, whatever else is going to remain chemicals on that, that you need to get off to stop the action. And just throw them down the water is all you need to do. Show that they're thoroughly down the water. Okay? And if you're going to use swelling it, you can see I've got my gloves on. Okay. Glove up. Because it is an acid type thing. Not really acid, I guess, but I guess. It, 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 it don't It'll make your fingers sore. It smells like vinegar. It's not strong smelling at all. But it'll make your fingers sore. Okay, so now they're coming out of there. And we're going to put our bowl aside. So we're done with it. Look at that. When I put that down the water, it came up even a little bit more. Excuse me. Maybe the, the water. But it's done. It's not going to process anymore now that I've done that. So now I have to dry it. And as you can see, it's it's kind of blotchy. You know, so, well, you know, Brenda, I like that stuff that you used to carry at your site because it was nice and even. <laughs> That's what you think. You don't see that stuff when it came in here. That finish was done partially with paint, which is why can't you do that? You know, why are we paying somebody else to do this when we can do it? And especially on hollow pieces, like this one's a hollow piece. See how that goes back down in there? The paint would glurp all up in here, make it real dark on this side, hardly any on that side. You don't know how many times we had to send stuff back, have it done again, or just throw it back and do something with it ourselves. It just got to be a pain. You know, we couldn't get consistent. So if you're, if you're struggling for a consistent finish, hey, you might as well make your own recipe. And go for it yourself and save the money. We all need to be frugal. Brass stampings are a premium product. Everybody should know about brass stampings. Everybody should use brass stampings. Beaters use brass stampings. Um, they're historical. They're exciting to work with. They're interesting. Versatile beyond compare. But maybe we need to get away quite so much artisan finish that is purchased and we be the artisan. Some we can't do ourselves like a rusty black that I carry that's an interactive finish with a copper underlayer. You can't do that at home. Ain't gonna work. That has to be commercially done but this you can do. Okay so we did this now what? Well these are some that I did last night. And as you can see, they are very teal. Very, very, very teal. This one's kind of brownish. How did that happen? Well, I used some alcohol ink on it. No, I didn't. It wasn't alcohol ink. It was this stuff. Okay, I'm lying. All right, I'm trying to keep this straight. Okay, it was the Vintage Patina, which we don't carry anymore, but you can get it in any big box store. Not that I want you to go to a big box store, but I'll tell you what, you're never going to find brass stampings like this at a big box store. I said it, I'm done. But, you'll find it. And, it's a really nice product. I, I love it. I love this stuff. 
and I use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit on here to show you how you can get kind of some of this. So I'm going to leave my gloves on because this will stain. Um, let's take this because this is really, really uneven. Okay, I've dried it pretty good. I'm going to take my, my quadruple aught ultra fine steel wool and I'm going to rough this up a little bit first. I'm going to take a little bit of the uneven stuff off. See, that's the cool thing about it too, is, is you can really, you can really, you know, like if you get a, a take on your verdigree or something that you don't like quite, you can remove so much of it with your steel wool. So long as it's before you seal it. You know, I kind of like it like that. It's looking pretty good. But, for the sake of argument, let's see what happens. Whoops. You know what? I just feel compelled to show you how you can mess stuff up. Because I mess stuff up all the time. So don't feel bad. Alright. Everybody messes up from time to time. That one's quite Don't use that one. Okay, I have some little sponges here that I like to use there. Pretty cool. Let's get a bunch of sponges and cut them all up and you'll have them ready. Where's my people? Okay, there are some over here. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, I've got a little bit of my vintage. This one's from the patina set. This is called Verdigris. Okay, I think I'm creating a set. I wish they'd make them so you just buy one at a time, too. That's another thing I didn't like on Anyway, I'm going to take my sponge and the color, and I'm just going to kind of do this on some of the highlights. That's pretty bright, but there are things we can do to deal with that, too. You could put some darkening patina with some metal coating on there if you wanted. And take down. See, I'm just moving some of it with my fingers, though. You can also use a dry sponge that doesn't have anything on it. And you can use it almost kind of like a mini soft buffer. Donna and I were here playing last night. She says, I can't believe you can use a sponge like that, the way you would use the steel wool. But I'm just putting a little color on it, a little bit of grit. Because, you know, real verdigree has a little bit of grit. Just a little bit of that. You could do probably a whole piece with that too. Like, let's try it. I've got a piece of brass here that has simply been torch patinaed. There's nothing else to it. Let's see what happens. Now, lightly, we want to do this lightly. It's a little dark, but it's 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 um, interesting. You could probably go over it with another light color of some kind. You know, just experiment. In fact, I've got an idea. I have a little bit of Inca gold stuff that I mixed up over here. Let's see what happens if I get a little bit on my fingertip and go over it. Ooh. See that lightened that right up. Now I'll have to let that cure. And then I would take it outside and hit it with some Krylon matte or satin spray lacquer. And that would be that. Now these have the verdigree and a little bit of this stuff. This, um, it has Tiffany Green Rust swelling it first and then I've enhanced it with a little bit of this. But now what if I take and do this for an option. Buff a little bit of that off. Bring some of the gold back. Oh, move that out of there. Is that in camera sight? Good. Okay, good. So I'm trying to keep my fingers. See, i got my fingers this way too. All right, now I take a little bit of the stuff I have on my finger. Let's go over it and see what happens. It hasn't dried up for you. Just a little bit. Okay, so now I've got a nice mix. And it looks kind of nice and weathered and aged. Now what if I do that to this? Hmm. And then my, what I might do is take one of these sponge foamy thingies that I've talked to you about before 
and go over that. This was torched and then it had espresso Adirondack alcohol ink, which again you can find anywhere. I don't carry it. That's kind of cool. I like that. Let's see, no wet. I might have had some on. That's cool. This was um, some primary colors and the Inca Gold um, Old Silver that I mixed together, like the video that I made several months ago. We still have it up. You can easily find it. You'll go back maybe eight, ten videos and you'll find it. The Inca Gold video, which I love. So there's one a little different way. Cool, huh? I like it. What if we put some of that on here, on these guys? Let's see what happens. We're just playing, guys. I'm into playing. Because the thing is about this stuff, you can get it off. You can go back to raw brass if you want. You've never lost a piece. Even when you torch it, you can get that off before you seal it. You can even get it off after you seal it. It's just no fun. <laughs> It's a lot of work getting it off after you seal it. But you can. You don't. You've never lost the piece. So never think that you have. Now what would be cool on this is if maybe I took a little black. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't try it before. But maybe if you took a little black and went in some of the cracks, or even oh, I got an idea because I'm I love this teal color and brown together. So let's take and let's do that. Let's take, this is the Adirondack Earth Tones Alcohol Ink Espresso. I used to carry it. I just figured, hey, it's easier you can pick it up. Okay. I concentrate on the brass and the glass and the vintage stuff. Let's put a little bit of that. Oh. See, it, it's going on all those places I scuffed off the highlights. Oh, is this pretty? Me likey, me likey. Just off of a little piece of a sponge. I probably got my hands in the way too much. This is so hard to do the work. And it show you every step of the journey. <laughs> and I want you to see every step of the journey. Oh, this is gorgeous. See guys, we just discovered this together. So how did I get it looking like this? Let's go back a minute. Well, first we did the swell again. Tiffany Green, and we let it process. Then we used a little bit of the Vintage Verdigris and brought a little teal out, kind of enhanced it. Then we scuffed that back and we added a little bit of, this is actually the color. That's the old silver with a little bit of, um, it's a teal color, primary colors. They're pure pigments. I have to tell you, Pearl X and Perfect Pearls will not get you this. I tried it. I got a dismal mess, and I wasted a lot of product. Um, don't do that. you got to use the primary elements because they are pure pigment color, and Pearl X is a dusting of, of mica powder, almost like eyeshadow, honestly. So... I mixed that together, that's what I got. Yeah, I'll just highlight a little bit more. That's just fun, you know, just you just play with it. A little bit more in there. I'm gonna have some more fun with this later. Didn't that come out great? And you can do your own. And it can be totally yours and totally your look. So let's do another one. I don't want to take all day and all night with this, but I want you to see. This one is always exceptional. So I'm going to start first with buffing it back. I don't know if I want to add anything to this or not. I'll be honest. It took really nice and even. It's got a really cool kind of green, almost an olive look to it. It just shows you that elements of surprise is there. You just don't know. Like four box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. But buffing that back. Oh, man. Is that pretty? To get it out of the flowers a little bit more. Let them show up. There's a little flower here, here, and here. 
Okay. Oh well. Let's take maybe, and we'll just add, let me bring this over here. We'll just add a little bit more of this uh, vintage color to it. Maybe just on some. Ooh. That's pretty. It's a little more metallic looking than, than I would like. Kind of reminds me of my grandmother's old ornaments she used to have. Color. This is a very glassy. But you know, maybe you like that. And this is what this is looking like. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of smooth it out a little bit to blend it. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that. But that's what I'm doing. And then I think I want to add some of that brown alcohol into it. It's so neat how you can mix all these products, isn't it? That's why, you know, it's, it's just, you couldn't just go anywhere with this. Now it's going to be fine tuning to get this so it's not too much. Yeah, this is more my look. That other, it was okay to get a little bit of the brighter teal color in. And, you know, you could have ten shades of teal in here and it would just look more natural because if I if you go find an old piece of weathered copper and you look at the shades of teal in it you're going to be amazed it's not just one color it's a lot okay I've got more some on that side and the other Get a little bit more down in there and I'll continue to work with this if you can see that is awesome sauce Okay, so now what what do I do? You can use a paper towel to buff it back and get the excess off too. So what do I do to seal it? Very simple. You can run them outside and do two light coats of Krylon, matte or satin. If you want a little slow, mellow shine, do the satin. If you want it completely matte, look just like this, use the matte Krylon spray lacquer that you get at Walmart or wherever. Okay? Or, for a really nice finish, I'll tell you, this is what I use on these. I used this product. Which is, these, probably in about 10, uh, I probably like to wait more like an hour, but I could do it pretty soon, because this drives fast. Um, call it Swelligant Clear Sealant, Clear Coat Matte Finish. It's like five dollars a bottle or something we carry at the website anything you swell again to on it's really good to use this product and it's matte it's not going to give you a glossy look you can see it's just a nice finish I did these butterflies with it yesterday oh, you probably see them better if I just lay them down I did this crown with it yesterday and that's finished. These three, these small well, three, this one, three, one, two, three, four, five. They're all finished. These are all done, ready to use and project. And they look like they've been stuck down in a sea wreck for a long time. And that's what look a lot of people want. So there you go. There are some ideas to create your own wonderful color. These are awesome, awesome, awesome. I could never offer you a finish that looked that great. Oh, wanted to show you this real quick too. That's one with just patina gilder's paste on it. And I'll distress that and I'll probably add a little bit of that brown espresso to it because that's, that's what I'll bring that up and it'll make it look good. But anyway, there's your options. Um, I used Swelligant Tiffany Green. I also used on this one, I put a little bit of the darkening over top of that next to men. This is what I finished them with, the Swelligant. I accented them with the Vintage Patina Verdigris. Probably a lot of you have got this already. The set, the Patina set, was the one we sold the most of. We are always running out of that one. Um, also, the Espresso Alcohol Ink, Avalon Deck. Um, that, and the Baroque Art Builder's Paste. Between those products, you can have everything you need. If you want to try the Inca Gold, too, we also carry that. So, 
have some fun. Make your own patina. You're going to love it. And write your recipes down. Okay? And we'll see you at bisuboutiques.com because that's where we have the good stuff. That's where we carry all this wonderful brass. We do have some exquisite plating finishes that you cannot reproduce at home either. We have chain, we have glass, we have some cool plastic. You, see, you just have to come and see, so come and see us, okay? Okay, have fun making your own patina. I'll see you next week.